A here on Double RT Boxing. A post fight recap of Leo Santa Cruz defeating Chris Avalos. Leo retains his WBA Super World Featherweight Championship title. Um, what can you say about this fight? It was dominated by Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, the referee stopped it from just a, uh, he felt it was just too much, uh, too much punches, too, uh, the accumulation of punches taken by Chris Avalos was too much. Um, he, he was getting hit a lot. He was getting hit a lot. He's, at first he was taking them with no uh, effect. But as the fight started going on, you see him, his head start getting rocked back. Uh, his, 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 like his leg, he leaned back on his leg. So like I said, for like the first three rounds, four rounds, he was just boom, just taking him, boom, boom, you know, hard, hard chin. But, uh, is it? In my breakdown prediction video, I said, uh, Leo needed to, the pressure was on Leo for this fight cause. All the all the other elites that uh, Chris have been in the ring with, Mark Maceo, Oscar Valdez, uh, Carl Frampton, they all knocked him out, stopped him in five rounds or less. He's never been knocked out. He's just been stopped. So uh, Leo took him to the eight. Uh, he almost had him in the fourth. It it could have been our. It, could, it would have been understandable if the referee stopped in the fourth because he, Leo took a, put a barrage of punches on him from one side of the ring to the other side of the ring to the other side of the ring. It just one, two of them, one, two of them all day. Now, Chris really didn't provide much of a, I guess a visual test of what Leo could do what he can't handle, um, but he did hit Leo pretty good on some shots. Nothing too uh, alarming to Leo's corner, but it was just for a championship fighter, for a champion, I should say, you know, for a champion fighter to get hit by that type of caliber. That level of opponent, it's not good, not good. Uh, it, it, it's, is that what Leo is, or did he just fight down to Chris's level? Cause Chris was able to throw with him, land a couple shots, and Leo missed a lot of, he missed a lot of punches, and and it's just a one-two, just one-two. Like, no body work, no body work from the way. He, he, he started going to the body work around, around, end of round five, go to round six. Then he kind of got away from it again. And then just, you know, they kept landing that one-two, just bah, bah, just kept landing it. But it's so repetitive, same rhythm, same speed. Uh, you could time Leo, and I, I, I like Leo Santa Cruz a lot. You know, he's right. You know, he's a, he's actually fought in my. Even though he's from Anna, I mean, he's from the LA region. He's actually came out here to fight at Anaheim, so I was kind of cool with that. So I get to see one of my favorite fighters. I enjoyed that. Um, but he's just for a champion. He's very predictable. If you could survive his onslaught of volume punches as much as I like Leo Santa Cruz I think he's very easily beatable because he, he, he provides no body attack his footwork is either average or below um, with his length and his height he doesn't provide much of a jab so he He's not really a, a back foot fighter or an outside fighter. 
he, he actually either stay right in front of you, punch his distance, or he gets it within the phone booth. And I really don't see how much longer Leo could be a champion. Uh, I won't be surprised if Adam Morris beats him on this one. I get more into that. But they said that they said they did sign that rematch. So I, I do a breakdown on that. It, that that's still a 50-50 fight. But I will get into who wins that one on my prediction. So going over again, this is Double RT Boxing, Ready Ready Talk Boxing with Mr. A. Um if you have subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please do help this channel grow. Leave a comment down below. Let's talk boxing. Ask me anything. I try. I usually answer back pretty quick. Or if not, I answer you by the end of the day. Um, Leo Santa Cruz, out of all the elites that uh, Chris Avalos has fought, Leo took the longest to stop him. Uh, he took a he took a lot of Leo's punches clean. Uh, Leo just needs a body work. I think if he, it's, it's like I said, it's not like his team don't know this. His dad is always instructing him: go to the body, go to the body, stop fighting this guy. Use your jab. You use your your limb. You you know body work and limb, body work and limb. Leo just has a hard time. Being a uh, focus champion and not a people's champion, he always wants to please the crowd. With his style, the crowd loves it, the volume punching. But if he's the box, whether on the outside or you know move a little bit, do some body work, and then just do that volume punch about 30 seconds around, the crowd will love him. You know. You know, but hey, I guess as long as he's winning. But until it watch when when he does get hurt pretty bad, I think it's gonna be a rough climb back for Leo Santa Cruz because he's so predictable. He is so so predictable. This is Mr. A on the post fight recap of Leo Santa Cruz and Chris Avalos and still WBA World Super Featherweight Champion. Chris Avalos is saved by the referee in the eighth round from too much accumulation of punches. Leo Santa Cruz gets his victory. Uh, out of all the elites, he stopped Chris Avalos. The law took him the longest. The eighth round, Carl Frampton, Oscar Valdez, and Mark Maceo took him five rounds or less, or maybe six for one of them. I forgot which one. Uh, to me, Leo. Still the same problems he always had. How many times can you go back to the drawing board? I guess if you ain't got a pencil when you're going back to the drawing board or a dry marker, it doesn't really help to go back to the drawing board. Because you ain't learning, man. You ain't learning, Leo. This is Mr. A saying thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching the video. Double RT Boxing. Ready, ready? Talking that boxing, baby. Mr. A's out.